Hi, I'm Sariva Fisher with Keller Williams Realty in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City. And today, in As the Market Turns, I'm here with Brad Poe of SWBC Mortgage. Thank you once again for being here, Brad. It's always such a pleasure and Thank informative. Um, today, we're going to talk about how to prepare when overbidding on a property, which is a big, big uh, topic in, t in Nashville and the surrounding areas. Sure is. Tell me from a lender's point of view how we would do that. Okay, would be happy to. So uh, what buyers need to understand, what we wanna convey today is that um, depending on what type of loan you're doing, the lender is always looking to make sure that you've met your minimum investment requirement for that loan product. Sure. Yeah. So it's on a conventional loan, it's typically 3% or 5% down payment. Uh, FHA, again, as you know, is 3.5%, and, a half percent, and right. there are still 100% loan programs out there for VA and USDA. Wonderful. So as long as that minimum investment is met, then any other additional funds that you might have uh, for the offer, for the closing, can be used for an appraisal gap, okay? So the way lenders look at this is that we evaluate the loan to value based on either the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever is less. So assuming that the appraised value comes in less, the lender's looking that you've met your minimum investment based off of the appraised value. So 3%, 5%, 3.5% of the appraised value, plus any additional funds for the appraisal gap. Right, Okay. right. So this is what I encourage all buyers to do before you write an offer. It is so important that you have an in-depth conversation with your lender. Something I always do for my buyers right. is that I have a discussion about a worst case scenario mm -hmm. and a best case scenario. So we assume, before the offer is written, of course, that the home only appraises for what the original list price was. And what does that look like financially for you, the buyer? Right. And then we also assume a best case scenario. What if the home does appraise for what you're offering over list price? What does that scenario look like? So I give them a range, worst case and best case. And as long as you, the buyer, are satisfied with those numbers, then we're good to write the offer as such. I see. Yeah. Okay. What else do we do to prepare when overbidding? Uh, well, we want to make sure that there is language in the contract that does protect you, the buyer, in some instances. Um, perhaps we leave the appraisal contingency in the offer, um, but uh, a lot of my agents will write in the offer that uh, the offer is contingent upon the home appraising for at least the original list price. Yeah, I like that. It's a good point. It is. Okay. So this does protect you, the buyer, mm -hmm. in, the, in the event the home doesn't appraise for the original list price you have that protection where you could exit the contract. So that does give you some cushion there, right. protection. So Brad, when a buyer wants to put an offer in for over list and assume that it might only appraise for list, they have to have that money in the bank for the gap. They do, in, okay. in, in some instances. Now again, that can fluctuate depending on the amount of money you were planning on putting down to begin with. You and I are working with a buyer now who was putting 50% down of the purchase price. Right. His appraisal came in a little low. It did not impact the transaction at all. Right. Okay, so his cash to close didn't change, his monthly payment and his interest rate remained the same. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, so it depends on how much you as the buyer have to put down. Mm -hmm. In some instances, nothing changes other wow. than the loan to value. Interesting. Yeah, and a worst case scenario, and we do still see this in this market, it's, it's kind of rare, but we do see it. If the home doesn't appraise for the list price, uh, oftentimes the buyer does have the option to go back to the seller and renegotiate the offer. I did a successful closing a couple of weeks ago where the buyer went back to the seller and seller's agent and offered to meet them in the middle between appraised value and their original purchase price. And the seller agreed. Yeah, I think there's always a way to negotiate, one, especially is. once you're under contract. Right. Everybody wants to get to the closing table. Sure. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. I think that's fantastic information. And if you have any questions about lending, call Brad. We'll have his information in this video at the end. Um, I've always been so happy with working with you, and you're always able to get take care of it all. Yes. So that's great. Thank you. Again, I'm Sariva Fisher with Keller Williams Realty in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, Brad Poe, SWBC Mortgage. And please, comment, share, like to my channel, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you.